What's up Equestrian Adventuresses? In today's video I'm going to be sharing with you some of my personal reviews on which riding boots you should wear on Equestrian Adventures. You know, there's kind of a debate between short boots or tall boots, so I'm going to reveal my personal opinions and share with you what has worked for me and what hasn't worked for me. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please do me a favor, hit the subscribe button. And one more thing, if you could hit the like button below, that actually helps the YouTube algorithm so that others can actually find this video. I'm your host, Crystal Kelly, and if you haven't seen this channel before, Equestrian Adventuresses is the channel dedicated to helping you go on equestrian adventures around the world. And let's get into it. So when it comes to riding boots for equestrian adventures, okay, whether you're out on the trail or you're doing endurance rides or you're going on an equestrian holiday, what boots are the best boots to wear? You know, do I go with the little short Ariat boots? Do I go with the tall, you know, waterproof kind of boots? What, what do I do? There's too many options, there's too many opinions. I see this question coming up quite a lot in our Facebook group and, you know, Again, these are sort of my personal opinions. However, I'm seeing a lot of variations. Some people really, really love the short boots. Other people really love the tall boots. So I'm gonna share with you my opinions and what, based on my personal experiences over the past 10 years, traveling and working with horses, what I have found to be the most comfortable and the most useful. Now, I was actually working as a show jumper. I was a show jumping rider, trainer, and coach in various countries. And then I also started playing polo and I had a lot of experience uh, coaching, you know, endurance students and kind of a variety of things so I've kind of traveled a lot been there done that uh, I have a lot of experience with a lot of variety of different disciplines when it comes to actually being all day on your feet I found that there were two types of boots that I really enjoyed the most one was just the normal simple basic Ariat paddock boots so I've used these boots for many many years with half chaps of course it always drives me crazy when I see people riding without half chaps um, but I use those boots for many many years they typically lasted me about five years and that was pretty low maintenance. I would just kind of, I don't know, put some basic saddle soap or oil on them every now and then, but not too often. Um, so I used those boots for quite a long time. Those were the best ones that I found when I'm actually riding in the arena doing uh, show jumping or dressage or things of that nature. Now, when I was out on the trail, I actually ride in my uh, tall boots. And when I say tall boots, I mean, you know, kind of these area tall boots or these Dublin river boots. Um, so boots of that nature. Now, these are my personal favorite for wearing when I'm giving riding lessons or when I'm coaching. But also the thing that I love about having tall boots. So I actually prefer tall boots over the short boots, the little half boots. And the reason that I personally enjoy the tall boots for adventures is because one, they're waterproof. Not completely. I wouldn't go dancing around in the... I don't know, rivers in them, but they're just waterproof enough that if I'm having a river crossing on my horse, I know my feet aren't going to get wet. And there's nothing worse than having wet feet when you're, you know, in the middle of the wilderness for the next, I don't know, three or four days on a camping expedition. Especially when you know that it's raining or it's miserable and your socks aren't really going to dry and you didn't really bring that many pairs anyways. So if having dry feet is important in the expeditions that you are about to do, I would definitely recommend having some waterproof tall boots because it can make a big, big difference. Now, having said that, I have heard, you know, some of my British students have actually informed me that there's a thing called waterproof socks. I have not personally tried them. However, they have told me that waterproof socks work a treat. Super British, I know. So if you are hardcore dead set on having half boots, then I would at least recommend that you have some waterproof socks with you for your adventures. Again, just so you can keep your feet dry. Another thing that I like about the tall riding boots is that they're extremely comfortable to wear. So it doesn't matter if I'm walking a lot on foot, you know, if we're hiking up and down steep mountains and I'm leading my course, um, or if I'm spending long hours in the saddle, if I'm like riding for five, six hours a day, um, it doesn't really matter. They're the most comfortable boots that I found to wear to actually be on my feet all day. So, you know, if I'm coaching all day or I'm running around, or if I unfortunately fell off a horse and a horse bolted into the distance and now I have to chase after him for five miles, I know that my feet aren't going to kill me because the boots are fairly comfortable. I always tend to buy half a size uh, bigger than what I actually need, uh, just so that my winter socks can fit in there, but also so that I have a little bit of breathing room inside of my boots. So that way my feet don't get too hot or cramped. One bad thing about having the tall boots is traveling, you know, on a flight. 
So obviously if you wear the boots, then you have to take them on and off in airport security, which is kind of a hassle. Um, they don't really slip on and off very easily. So it's kind of annoying, but if you're doing a long flight, uh, you know, it's not the end of the universe. And then usually when I'm on the plane, I'll take them out take my feet out of the boots and let my feet relax a bit. And obviously if you want to pack them, they do take up quite a bit of space in your suitcase. So for that reason, I could definitely see having a pair of the uh, smaller half boots for your adventures would definitely make more sense if you just wanted to travel light and you didn't really want to wear your riding boots on the flight. Then in this circumstance, I think the half boots would be great. However, I would definitely suggest pairing them with some good half chaps, okay? There's breathable half chaps, there's a whole variety of different types of half chaps, but definitely make sure that you find a good pair that's actually comfortable and fits you. Make sure you wear all of this stuff and you break in your boots before you go on your riding expedition. You do not want to have aching feet when you're alone in a mountain and you're six hours away from help, okay? Break in your boots before you go on an equestrian journey. Um, they will break in much quicker on the equestrian journey, but you definitely don't want to have achy feet. So it's the same with the half chaps. Make sure that you wear them, try them out, break them in a little bit before going on your expedition. A lot of endurance riders I have noticed like to ride in tennis shoes, which I am super against. I really, really, I cringe when I see that. I understand that a lot of the people that have the tennis shoes that they're riding in, you know, they usually have caged stirrups, so there's not a risk of their foot slipping through the stirrup. However, as a coach, and I, you know, I've seen so many bad accidents and so many bad things happen in my lifetime that I just, I cannot say to anyone to wear trainers or tennis shoes. Um, so, you know, personally, if you're like worried about, you know, the comfort of your feet, I would actually probably prefer to recommend you to the half boots um, with a pair of half chaps over having a pair of tennis shoes because I just I just cannot suggest for you to do that especially if you're in a new country you know they're not going to have a cage uh, stirrups even if you brought your own you don't know the horse you don't know what's happening uh, I just I can think of no situation or reason why you would need tennis shoes to have an equestrian adventure I know that's probably going to upset some of the endurance people but that's how I feel and that is my experience and I've never been uncomfortable wearing riding boots all day and I'm pretty used to it and I've done a lot of walking on my feet all day and riding all day in those different types of boots so I've never had a problem and it's like been fine so as long as you break in your boots before you go on the long expeditions I think you'll, you'll just be fine if there's a certain type of riding boots that you personally prefer for your adventures please leave a comment below and let us know which riding boots you actually enjoy the most I'm also going to leave a link below to our packing list where we actually reveal some of the favorites used by the women in our Facebook group who've reached out to us and said over the years which products and things that they have to have on their adventures. So go ahead and check out the packing list. The link for that is below or in the show notes. Thank you so much for watching and happy trails!